Oh, God damn, man. I got... I, I was struggling yesterday with my alcohol addiction, and now it turns out I'm also a drug addict. Ugh. All right, uh, I have a point. I almost, I'm, I'm about to level up. Uh, I got the bow collector. Yeah, and I got, all right. The rest I have to unlock, okay. Do I have anything that I want? I still need to pull down the, the thing. Hmm. We'll see. Well, we'll check. We'll check. Let's start the day. Let's try to be positive. Let's try to hide how disgustingly hangover we are. What do you call when you're like struggling from drug addiction, you know, and you're like hangover from that? Not, not hangover. You know what I mean? What's that term? Is there a term for it specifically? For speed? Hey, what's up? Morning. He gives you a quick nod. Looks like we can get to work at once. The union muscle turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. What do you mean rowdy? I mean ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCA being here. They prefer to be policed by the union. These men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast. There's talk of an armed wing of the union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. Yeah, we know. Are these men... Uh, the, the, are these the men guarded tell us about yesterday? I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. Oh, I got one point. Uh, I think my logic's still pretty good. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep saving them just for when we have a speech. There's so many of them. Maybe we should call in reinforcement? That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head. Okay, okay so if they kill us... One more thing before <laughs> we do. <laughs> okay. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Mm. Good. A power move. Purposefully concentrate on something else first. But aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? Yeah, but we should investigate more of the body and and other stuff before that. We haven't even been able to talk to the leader of the union yet. They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Now let's do a power play. Hey, Garter. Can I help you? Oh, I still have to pay my bill for today. Okay. Hi. Just a moment. How's it going, Lena? The old woman turns back to the cafeteria manager. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. The cafeteria manager appears genuinely apologetic. It's fine. I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Me too, Lena. The lady is distressed. Perhaps something more upbeat might cheer her up. Howdy, Lena. What's gigging? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. A faint smile tells you she appreciates the effort. But at the moment, her mind is on more serious matters. Yeah. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead too. She sighed. Oh, she wants to get her husband. The cryptozoologist, I suppose. So, what's wrong with the telephone line? The manager was vague about it. She frowns. Why would he be vague about phone problems? This is something to look into later. Ask God. I mean, we, we're still looking for who made the call in the first place. So if it was God, maybe it's related to that. Uh, why did you need to use the phone anyway? To let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night. But they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. She looks down. A little missing persons puzzle. 
might just be the thing to take your mind off the hangover. Okay, I'll bite. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. She glances out of the window towards the bay. Yeah, but uh, what the hell? More important than a missing expedition? I don't know. Expeditions often lead to something. Well, it's a corruptologist is probably related to something. What was this expedition your husband was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. You mean a cryptid? They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? The water lock. That was broken. Could this be it? Uh, I mean, probably. Uh, who's this scary person? Do you trust him? Oh, sweetie, it's nothing like that. She smiles. Gary's as loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life any day. The water lock on the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably just stuck over there. Oh my. What happened to the water lock? Wouldn't you know, it's blocked by a big butter billboard. It fell right into the water. Oh, sweetie. If it weren't for you, I'd be looking forward to another sleepless night. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, you're welcome. You remind me of my mom when I go five minutes somewhere without telling her. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. Ooh, I do like the sound of that. I do enjoy extremely rare insects. Yes, some left field scientific research is exactly what you need right now. Funk up that vanilla murder investigation. Hell yeah. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. It's still not repaired. I think they open it in the third day. If I see him, I'll let him know you're here. When or if I get there. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. So your husband is some kind of scientist. Oh, we're gonna go into cryptos now. Oh, yes. A zoologist. A crypto zoologist, to be more precise. Crypto as in mysterious creatures, not as a cryptocurrency. It is called crypto because it's actually almost a myth that you will actually gain some money from that. I'm <laughs> actually real money. Uh, what is cryptozoology? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. The lieutenant sound unimpressed. Cam, that's a little rude to say in front of the lady. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. Hobby? Come on, Cam. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. One specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. I think you, fictitious is usually the prominent uh, work here. Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. The quality of research at Revisholian universities has been on the decline, but you doubt there was ever a time when cryptozoology was embraced by the academic elite. Yeah, I don't really have a favorite cryptic. I don't know much about cryptics. There's some cryptics, uh, cryptics that are, we know they're absolutely, f are there cryptids where I live? Not really. We have legends of, of creatures and stuff, you know? But nothing that, that, that some people will be like, oh yeah, that is absolutely 100% real, you can find it. it. They're either 
like I said, one hundred percent stories, you know, to just to to justify something that exists in in this world, you know, in in the area, uh, or is like, I mean, if it could ever even ex something close resemble to exist, it's probably extend or something. They're just stories. I don't think we have cryptics as much as like in other countries. I, I, I know a lot about American country, um, American uh, cryptics because I watch like, you know, Wendigo, I love, I love like I, it's Fall 76, all, all kinds of stuff like that. So I know something, I know some things, but I'm not an expert on this. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. Yeah. Ooh, suggestion. Maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptics. There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Oh, right. Okay, so I remember... I think there's a very good thought that we can get. That might trigger a couple of points in, 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 some, in something in R. Like it's a, I remember it's a good one, and we might need it. So, hey, Lena, I'd like to hear about some of the crit that you study. Could you just tell me a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company too. One cryptid, not a couple. One. This won't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. Okay, Kim, just one little cryptid promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. Ooh. Tough choice there. Okay, what what was the? I'm trying to think. What was the? What was the, the thing? I, I I know I'm using like technically knowledge from spoilers, but it was a really good thought, and I think it came up a couple of times. So I'm trying to. Uh, what was it? I think it was the are there any invisible cryptics? I think that's what. What an interesting question, and the answer is yes, there are. Of course. All fairy tales have someone or something invisible in them. Shush, Kim. She's gonna tell me about the invisible cryptid. What is it? I mean, I could be like, "You're right, Kim. It's childish." I don't want to say that because, again, even if I even if I do think they're childish, and and I mean, I do sort of think it's, it's to some extent. But just not here. Can we just you know indulge her a little bit? Just be like, "Oh, fun story about an invisible creature. That's cool." You know? Shush, Kim. She's gonna tell me about the invisible cryptid. What is it? It's the cold to mama duck. Yeah, that's one. That's the one. Its name means thin. I would have never remembered that name a million times, a million that's years. That's precisely what it is. Self-replicating sound waves, invisible and intangible. The cold to mama is very afraid of us, which makes it incredibly difficult to track. Cold to mama duckwa can also be translated as a whisper, light and low. Ah, oh, okay. Well. Let's try to impress her. A whisper, lie and low. Yes, that's another translation. They are both quite lovely, aren't they? It is. It is rad. It is fucking cool. Yeah. Although the low part is a little ironic, the cold de mama d'aqua makes, or rather, is such a high pitched sound that other animals, including humans, can't hear it. It could be everywhere, all of the time, and we wouldn't know. I'm not an expert on sounds, but is it possible for a sound to be so low that it will be, it will become like similar to high pitch? It will be invisible to, not invisible, you know, unhearable. I'm really curious. I don't know how how it works. I'm not an, I'm not an expert on many things, as you can probably tell. Fine, I'll bite. How can an animal be a sound? The lieutenant looks looks at her s skeptical. Many scientists have asked the same question. Some have claimed that it isn't itself a sound, but a tiny corpuscle that emits sound waves. But there's no evidence to support this theory. Uh, could it be, you know, here? Looks around. Right now? It could be. As I said, it could be everywhere. And we wouldn't know any better. It could be ringing all the days of our lives and nights. What evidence is there of an animal being a sound? Plenty. It's the evidence that led to its discovery. In the 20s, a group of areopagite ornithologists, that is, scientists who study birds, 
we're trying out a new recording technology for capturing sounds outside the range of human hearing. When playing back recordings they had made in the foothills of the Ea mountain range, they noticed certain anomalies, patterns that seemed random at first, but on closer examination were consistent with the waveforms of songbirds. Mm, songbirds. The scientists soon discovered they could track and even predict what appeared to be feeding, mating, and migration patterns based on sound waves in a strictly delimited range of ultrasonic frequencies, even higher than those of the highest pitched bat calls. She transforms when speaking about these strange animals into a confident. I was gonna come and she she sounds a lot more cheerful and she sounds like like a teacher. You know, she's like, oh. They realized that they had discovered a new species and called it the Col de Mama d'Aqua, after the Paracanassian name for the voice of God, which is said to be very silent. Hmm. Okay. Uh, again, I have no idea of the uh, even in this world, with the context of being inside this world, I don't know how much of that is believable. But it does sound more believable than just saying like, oh yeah, just a, a kid, uh, a 40 year old uh, dr uh, high kid in, in the forest saw a creature that it was just a bear. Have you ever seen a bear shape? It really looks like, I don't know, a fucking monster, like a weird monster. It looks like a giant, like a, <laughs> like a rabbit dog or something. It looks super weird. So, you know. But that, you being like, oh... Actual scientists trying a machine that sounds, you know, I don't know, sounds more believable, I guess, at least to to be like, well, there might be something there. Wow, I would say wow, like wow, mm -hmm. wow, we. They grew quite obsessed with these little birds. Even though they couldn't see them, they could distinguish among individual birds and even began to name some of them. Name them. Sequester, Time, Joss Can. Those are but some of the Mamadakwa they followed individually. If, if there is a sound, why is the Mamadakwa so afraid of us? That is a sad story. A group of university students assisting with the field work in their enthusiasm for the project, and no doubt because they were preoccupied with impressing their professors, nearly drove it to extinction. Extinction? They tried to communicate with it and had no other means but sound. So they started sending out sound waves at frequencies they thought might match the Mamadakwas. And what happens when a sound wave meets another sound wave of the same frequency, dear? I have no idea. This lady really should be a teacher. She's really good at the explaining things thing. Yeah. Psst. They cancel each other out. Thank you, Encyclopedia. Psst. I'm glad. <laughs> Psst. Thank you. Psst. They cancel each other out. Exactly. And these tests were performed so recklessly that when they happened upon the right frequency, well, they wiped out most of the population. That doesn't explain why will they exist on the first... Like, I assume... Like assuming a creature, let's get philosophical for uh, philosophical, you know, for a second, you know, let's think scientifically. Let's say that there is a bird uh, that can somehow be invisible and communicates through a extremely high pitch, almost invisible sound, you know, frequency. Uh, why would it be like that in the first place? They say, why is it afraid of us? And it's like, oh, well, we, we killed some by accident, presumably, but I mean, they were invisible in the first place, and we didn't discover them. So, besides, will they get afraid of them? I mean, I know crows can, like, are <laughs> creatures that actually ditch between each other. Actually, that might be the case, like the ravens. Ravens actually, they hate a particular human who's been cruel to them or something. They actually, the crows, be, they teach their young is to hate that guy, that particular guy, which is such a fucking hilarious nature thing. I love it. I love that fact. So maybe it was something like that. But again, there were already there were already quote unquote invisible sound waves. So um, I don't know. 
you know? It's like, why the world feel like that? I guess to be safe? Because no other animal could make the same sound? It seems, seems weird, you know? Great regret washes over her. A wending cloth. After that, the corpuscle appears to have migrated elsewhere. There have been recordings of anomalies similar to those spotted in Ea. But EA. They've been few and far between. It's impossible to confirm the presence of any stable Kaltamama Dakwa population anywhere. Hmm. Of course. A common thread in these. Disappearance and unfalsifiability. I like the story, though, ma'am. It is pretty cool. You know, it's it's definitely a more a lot more interesting than, like I said, the story of someone someone saw a creature, you know, in the forest at 2 a.m. and they don't know what the fuck it was. I'm glad you did, dear. Interesting. What about... What about what? Oh, okay. I should probably back off. Is this a cryptid on the pen you gave me? Take out the pen she gave you. Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. Right, okay. We can move on from now. It'd be dishonorable to re... re, re, re Back off on the promise. He nods, approving him. Okay. Do they will get the thought? We didn't get the thought. What the hell? Then I supposed to. Does this? Yeah. This 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 does consume a thought. Point. Kind of sucks. Oh, hold on. I remember. I think I have to go outside. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that for a second. I know this is maximizing in a game that really doesn't matter that much. Oh yeah. There we go. Was that? Could it be the Koldamama Dakwa? No, it's probably just your imagination ringing in your It's head. definitely not my imagination, invisible voice in my head. Is it? Is there a ringing? Listen more closely. There seems to be an extremely high-pitched ring. Ultrasonic. Lena said it was very high-pitched, right? It's like something tickles your ear. <gasps> Lane oh my God. also said that it couldn't be heard by any other animal, including humans. What you're hearing must just be a regular bird. I, 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 I reject your logic, or I guess my own logic, and I, and I go with my online empire. Listen closely first. There it is again. You're about to rediscover a long lost species. Keep listening. It must be very close. Maybe, just maybe, it will come toward you. Kim, do you hear the high-pitched noise? No, I don't hear the Koldo Mama Dakwa, and neither do you. Oh. Of course he doesn't. He's deaf. Move your head towards the sound. Oh no. The sound. It's moving away. Somewhere over there. Go after it. No. Too late. It's gone. There is no ringing anymore. Just the sound of the streets. No, come back, please. Listen more. Keep your ears peeled, then. If the species really has migrated to Martinez, you're sure to hear it again. Okay, we got the thought. I remember this thought being really good. I can barely fucking see this font with like the background. Temporary research bonus, none. Research time, seven hours. So it's good that we do this a little early, I think. You heard it. The mysterious school do Mama Dakwa. You're certain that you did. Well, maybe not quite certain, but let's say you're hopeful because it will make you very special. To be the only human being who can hear this invisible incorporeal burr. This anime whisper. This particle of sound. You're going to have to keep listening. Sharpen your ears. Internalize. Okay. Pretty good. Okay, let's... That's just what, that's just what I wanted to do for a little bit. Alright, well, we will, we're waiting on our thoughts to be complete. Oh, let's keep hello, talking. Dear. There you are again. I'm sorry. Can you tell me about Morel? I, I, I was thinking about the the thought and the cool the mamakwa and how cool it sounds and everything and i kind of lost track of stuff uh i need a description of the character you know uh looks character your relationship oh dear i'm not sure where to begin what does your husband look like hmm well his expression is slightly grumpy but his eyes are always bright and curious like a small boy's and his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. That's a terrible description. I don't know. Would you want me to look into these eyes? You can't go around forever short feeling grown men's hands. 
If you want to find her husband, you'll need more concrete information. It's always a challenge to describe the person you know best in the world. Mm, let's try again. Why don't you try describing him as you would one of your cryptids? Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame. And he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. You might say wild, even. Oh, Lena. Lena, my, my darling. Do you like wild men? Hmm? The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. One other thing. He'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. Of course. What if they call the Mama Dakwa? It's just, just around the corner. How long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. Hey, come on. That is, that is fair. That's a, a decent amount. So I guess you marry when you were older. I think I recall uh, you telling at some point. Anyway, you're married and all, it's almost all enough to go to jail and drink. So hey, how did the two of you met? By a dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident. And he just divorced. Probably she didn't support his cryptozoologist. Uh, activities. We hit it off and, well, here we are. She smiled wistfully. Well, I hope you two are very happy. You seem to be very into the cryptozoology stuff and he, him as well, even though I haven't met him. So, you know, you sound, you sound pretty cute. I think I have all the information I need. Let's move on. I hope I've been useful. Tell me more about this rare insect your husband is looking for. You cannot tell me not, Kim. This is not. I'm not asking about. It's this is for this is for tracking him as a person. Don't give me shit. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating, but I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. Uh, no, I want to hear about this. I want to. I want. To. I need it. Well. It's a phasmid, technically, but... Phasmid! <gasps> I have no idea what, that's, what does that mean. Ah, yes. Phasmatodia. A diverse group of insects whose bodies resemble twigs, leaves, that sort of thing. Oh, cool. Ghost insects. Colloquially. Oh, yeah. Here comes the interesting... Oh, here comes the... Cryptid. Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insul Indian coast. Cool. Hence its name, the Insul Indian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the phasmid with us, officers. She looks you in the eye and nods thoughtfully. That would be I so knew cool. It. We're going to be chasing made-up insects with cryptozoologists. It's not made up, officer. I can assure you. And even if it is, you know what? I'm st I'm still I'm still on board. It's simply elusive, so much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. What makes you think the fast mid is around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. Of course, drunk teenagers making out in the wild, the most trustful source of news you could ever get. So a newspaper clipping is all the evidence you have? Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but the description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly, and they didn't even know what they were looking at. Right. Right. So, uh, is it dangerous? <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? Eh, true. I mean, I don't know. Some animals are really good at, like, hiding and stuff, but uh, to attack a prey, I mean, is it valuable? Oh, I doubt it. No one gets into cryptozoology for the money, sweetie. Does it have cool powers? Yes. It can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years. 
centuries even. How do you know centuries? Okay, what's so special about this thick bug then? Oh dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. The woman face flushed with embarrassment. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. I really like to hear more about cryptics. You know, to hell with it. Let's have more cryptids. Thank you, Kim. Of course, officers. Is there a particular cryptid you two are interested I in? I want to know more that? about my pen. Uh, take out the pen with the monkey or hey, gorilla. You promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. Uh, what the hell are you talking? You should say, but Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptid too? The lieutenant pauses thoughtfully. Something in him breaks. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's have more cryptids. Yes! Well, the cryptid on your pen is the kind green ape. Half war story, half undiscovered species in the gayness homo. I, I, I need to listen to that again because I, I got very confused mid-sentence. The cryptid on your pen is the kind green ape. Half war story, half undiscovered species. What does that even mean? War story. Yes, it was reported by soldiers in South Safra during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. What? <laughs> that's 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 some that's some dumb. That is some stuff. That is something. Oh, a green monk gorilla healing with their saliva. With its saliva? Yes. It has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. I don't believe that. That is, that is too much even for me. And there was something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different gayness. How do you know they're different gayness? What's a gayness? Like DNA? Genes? I mean, it's kind of the same, but you know what which I mean. Which is to say, the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own. Just like your partners. I'm s oh, excuse me. Just like your partners. Excuse me? Lena, are you racist? What, what the fuck does that even mean? Just like your partners. It's just the green... <laughs> I'm pretty sure Kim is the same species as us. To suggest otherwise is stupid. The lieutenant looks at you, pleasantly surprised. Why are you pleasantly surprised? I'm, I'm not racist. You know that, Kim. Oh no, I didn't mean to imply that Saleites are inferior to us in many ways. You compare it to a you are an superior. Ape. For example, your earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. Lena, please change the subject right now. A tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure. But perhaps we've had enough speculative Man, we, mi we missed the lottery of being a gorilla and having spilling uh, healing saliva. Does that make Steven Universe... <laughs> does that make Steven Universe a, an ape? <laughs> a green kind ape. You know what? He, he, he could be. He can be. He can transform into an ape. What's the most dangerous cryptic? The gnome of Jeroma. That doesn't sound too bad. Oh, it is. None of his victims survived. Or even relatives never even found their bodies because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue. What did this cryptic look like? It was reportedly a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and a gangly little thing. Quite scary to look at. I thought you said there were no survivors. A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. If the body of the creature was found, why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks confirming the existence of this very little species? That's a very good question. You say it took a day to die and they have it, uh, they have it wrapped up. Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde, thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Instead, 
All the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. I mean, wouldn't still the the jar with the format they had that, whatever the fuck that is, uh, wouldn't have like some traces of venom or something? Uh, I, I don't. Maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't know. Alas. Always, alas, and then it was gone. Isn't that overly convenient? Yeah, I mean, seems very convenient that it just disappeared. Nothing like it was ever seen again. I understand your skepticism, but that's what happens with things that are rare and stand out. Their disappearance is most memorable, and they are least likely to be found again. I guess if I found a fucking gnome... And <laughs> he fucking died and he got melted in acid or whatever the fuck the guy put him. Alcohol, whatever it was. Uh, I guess it will be pretty memorable. Well, if I just, if I just like, do instead of just having like a unique ant, there's like a new species that no one has discovered. And I suddenly step on it and I kill it and I barely even notice. I guess that will make a difference, you know? But still, convenient. Uh, all, all these stories, they're... I don't actually believe in almost any cryptic. I don't think any of them are real. Again, one or two could be actual species. I don't know, but... You know, like, I don't know. The Smiling Man or whatever, you know. All that weird frog stuff. You know, that's not... That's not... Probably not. What is the tiniest cryptic? I mean, they have to be hard to find. Cryobacter catlensis. Cryobacter catlensis? Yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Kotla, on the Boreal Plateau, by renowned geologist Caitlin Mijanu some 70 years ago. And what's so special about it? The bacterial colony Mijanu found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate. Certainly from before recorded history. Okay, that is that is that sounds a lot more believable like I I heard like a couple of stories like a couple of times the scientists in different parts of the world have found like um, uh, a super ancient virus or bacteria or something, you know in I don't know frozen, but I I hear that they did found them. So I mean, I guess this is could be true Mishinu disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. What? She injects herself with it? Yes. The bacteria had survived in the ice since times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. Yes, it is hard to believe that that an idea. Why would you inject something mysterious into your body that you don't know what it's gonna do why, why would you why would you do that like if you found a, a person that is immortal you know trapped in ice or whatever you what you're gonna fucking eat it or something gonna make a smoothie out of his body and be like i'm gonna be immortal no i wouldn't think that i wouldn't think that besides ice is you know if it wasn't ice like yeah you know like fucking ice conserve stuff i guess you know it's actually a little hard to see, but do go on. So you mean to tell me there's an immortal geologist wandering the world? Yes, and she's quite mad too. After she treated herself with the bacteria, she stopped aging, but also became increasingly eccentric and irascible so that even her oldest friends were forced to pull away. We can assume that she has been living somewhere in the wilderness for decades now. All alone except for the cryobacter catlensis coursing through her bloodstream. Okay, that that was that was that was a lot. Besides, again, she's probably she's probably just have a mental illness or something, <laughs> or she didn't become immortal. She just simply become crazy or something because she injects something weird in her body and she she maybe she maybe everything maybe everything is like she injected bacteria went to the wilderness. And then she just ate and die or something. Or, or or something happened to her. Like like a lion eat her. Or she got into the bell and she got destroyed or something. I doubt she's living in that. It's an immortal. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what the game wants me to think too, you know, being like, yeah, right. Uh, what's the biggest cryptid? That would be the giant of Koko Nur. She say, as it is, as it is, it is common knowledge. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Koko Nur desert in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. What do you mean, strange lights? Um, mirage or a psychogenous luminance. She does not elaborate the nature of this luminance further. And just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. Is it uh, dangerous? The towering luminosity of Kokonur is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a Fata Morgana, others fate unimaginable. Who are you? No animal can be that large. It's a mirage. I mean, have you seen whales? They're fucking enormous. That's what makes it so peculiar. A species surviving at the very limits of scientific law. The giant of Kokonur must be the largest animal the planet can support. There are limits, you see, to how large a metabolism an ecosystem can beget. Some say a gravity anomaly below the Kokonur desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. You um, implied that there are many living. Great. This is great shit. You need more. Is it? It is interesting. It is not very believable, but it is interesting. What is? What? Will, what could be potentially the biggest creature alive in the universe? I do believe in aliens. Now, do I do believe in like the green, green or gray little aliens with little laser pistol traversing the universe? Not necessarily, but I mean, there's, there has to be some form of animals in the universe, you know? Who could say in a big ass planet couldn't exist a creature really, really, really big? Gravity anomaly, digging it. Digging this parascientific stuff right here. Man, I just can't enough of this cryptics. I'm glad you like them, but I'm not really one to tell you about all of them. You should ask my husband if you get the chance. He's the real expert. I will. That's all for now, man. Okay. Well, that was pretty good. I'm gonna just walk away now, guys. There is something <coughs> that we should probably do, actually. Uh, I know there's stuff missing here, stuff that I didn't talk with the kids, but there's something that we forgot to do in here? An inconspicuous pile. Alright, uh, what do you need to be An inconspicuous open? pile. You need perception. What is taking away perception? Is it the... Uh, is it my thoughts? No, it's hand and eye coordination. Do I have something that is reducing my perception? Oh, that. Okay. Can I put a point in perception? I can. And I think I will. Alright. Let's try again. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. Why am I looking at this pile of roofing material? Could have tell us about it, right? Because it's nice and orderly, it reveals no secrets. Oh, come on. Well, Alright. Well, that's, that's fine. Put, put back my stupid glasses. Did, did, did we ask Kuno about it? Fuck, does Kuno care? What to discuss the body again, the Kuno? Fuck about it. Your uh, test no, okay. Crime yeah. scene. The kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? The ladder. Ever climb it? Point to the ladder on the tree. Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. So you will say the ladder is unclimbable? Fuck, does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Would you would you get there in a dare? <laughs> the dead men's clothes were in the trash container. How did they get there? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. I mean I need to know it could lead it could be a lead in the investigation. Someone may have temp temper with the murder scene. Listen, listen! Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. That's that's what we Kuno do. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 
500 real. I'm not paying 500 real. Wait, I ask you what happened to his clothes. You must have seen them lying around. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around. Except for that uh. up there. Now you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains silent. But his expression couldn't say, I told you so, any louder. Come on, kid. We have to do it. All right, well, whatever. Entertain me. What's so great about these pants? Pig, these are found modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in me over by scientists. Pants scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. Hmm. Scientists. Pants scientists. That's a very that's a very commendable uh, branch of science. He unzips his jackets to give you a quick pick on the plastic wrap pants. They are graphite, graphite black and look brand new. Well, they look brand new. That's good. Coach Physical Instrument endorses these pants. They are tartan ready. Thank you, Physical Instrument. They will also make you into an idiot. They will make me an idiot. Hmm. They could be, they could still be good. I might be interested in the pan. Let's talk about this later. All right, Piggo, shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. He's gonna steal all your money, Kuno. As you can see, Kuno and C Now's don't a trust test by the pan. There's more to his distrust than being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, Remains a puzzle for me. You feel threatened by something obscure in you. Hmm. Because I mean, I am a cop. Maybe he's just he's just pretending. I don't. Know. I don't know. He's, pre he's pretending to, to be like I don't give a shit about you, cop. But it's like a fray. I'm gonna f do something. There was also a mug in the trash. Show him the mug. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Does this <laughs> oh, oh my god <clears throat> Yes, does this racing mug have anything to do with it? Yes, does this adequate this depiction of a sound Samaritan man have anything to do with it? Yes, does this quaint better not take it out of his historical context mug have anything to do with ah fuck. Does this racist mug have anything to do with it? Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you pigs are after the mug fucker? Because he's the clothes fucker. Probably. I can't hear you, Kuno. Speak louder, Kuno. That's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Someone has tempered with the crime scene, cleaning some of it up. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beatdown basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. He nods in approval. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Tell the Kuno who it was. He's curious. He likes putting two and two together here. Mm. Stop turning into a pig, Kuno. They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching. She get lets away a... from my Kuno. She lets a, a hiss even meaner than before. Yeah, get your bacon shit away. Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo. Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face. Okay, okay. Well, I might have questions for later. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno, I, I threw up and I can't investigate the body now. Yeah, like a fucking volcano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking pathetic. You're lucky you didn't die there. Maybe you can get some advice from me? I mean, you're obviously handling quite well. Yeah. Kuno's got some advice for you. The kids look to his left, then to his right, and then leans towards you. What are you? Like 80, right? Maybe you should stop embarrassing yourself in front of a fucking kid. Hmm, perhaps you could compress this negative energy and turn it into some sort of a Kunofied non-vomiter. <laughs> Kunofied non-bometer. Kunofied non-bometer. non, -bometer. non, -bometer. non -bometer. Here I come. That's right. Turn your weaknesses into conceptual strengths. Try it again now. Okay, we'll try it again now. And I do have uh, a thing and I could put one point in into it. So that would be cool. Oh no, I can't. Do I have a point? I'm, I'm about to level up, so yeah. I gotta ask, who is the Kuno? Kuno's Kuno pig? The boy points to his chest with both thumbs. It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective as a shield. 
Interesting, you refer yourself in the third person to, this, to distance yourself from the situation. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. He seems offended. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. The boy knows he has an addictive personality. Admirable insight for his age. Hmm. Well, I mean, it would be better to be hooked on books than in whatever you are. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing. Sh sh shrill and violent like a fire alarm. Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! The sound gets louder as the child shouts at the window overlooking the yard. Help! He's got the Kuno! I'm just going to leave. <laughs> yeah, get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Right. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. Man, I'm this, this fucking kids. Don't listen. Just go. Eh, just go. Don't even give him the, the satisfaction. Well, we gotta investigate this shit. There, he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse hold on i should probably wear this there he still is looking right through you we got 42 that's eyes. not too bad and we can put another point into it to that corpse yes yeah, shut up hangman Admitting it is all it does yeah know. shut the hell up we get this if we don't succeed we can still put another point into it the ammonia only makes it worse. The combat the Damn second it. time, not so much. Oh, we lose the ammonia. Well, that sucks. Spit and say nothing. Are you okay, officer? You feel the lieutenant pat you on the back, heavy rhythmic pats. The weight is reassuring. Like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. Thank you. You're facing tough odds here. It's aggravated further by alcohol withdrawal. Why can I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Uh, Throw I mean, up, this that bad. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. Okay. Monday, make sure you bring your handkerchief. Can we do something else? I think I want to solve something else now. That's probably a good idea. Clear our head. But before we can do that... He will struck his hands from your back and look you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Yeah, <laughs> okay. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty. You've gained a thought. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Turn away. I'll put another fuck. Oh, I don't have a point. God damn it. Bolometric shit compressor. 30 minutes. You shit is up par. And it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be on the opposite of that. Together. Compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheek together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemisp hemispheres in your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that will help. Yeah. Alright. Can I talk to you again for a second? Fuck, does Kuno care? Okay, Kuno I'm off. Does well, okay. Ugh. Ugh. That did not help. I'll get my shit. Well. I guess we still have a lot more to go. Let's go. Where are we going? Should I buy an, an ammonia again? I don't. I don't think we should. Oh, this guy. Hold on. Right to work. Right to work. 
Shame on you! You just gotta fucking talk to her. Are you the mercenary heist by Wild Pines? Hell no. I'm just an honest scab. I won't have talk like that around here. You understand? It just has to be said. That was not a convincing line. Hell no, I'm just an honest scab. That didn't sound too convincing. Fucking loincloth. He stares you down mutely for a second. Loincloth? Now you see, that's not really what a scab would say, is it? Better not to press the issue further, sire. He seems tense. Says, said very quietly. Is there a tri tribunal being uh, covenanted by any chance? Fucking fuck. He breathes out slowly. His giant chest deflating and his mouth slightly open. I'm going to interpret that as a yes. There's a tribunal, and it won't be long until it's ready. How about you fuck off now, huh? Okay, of course. The lieutenant says his voice a soothing calm. He looks at there you. There could be weapons aiming at us right now, somewhere above, in the buildings. The other merc. Don't push this. He's thinking. This is not the time. Okay. The man's breathing. We Stay back off. All right. There is one thing that I want to that I want to before we finish this episode. We need to talk with this lady again because now that we know about the oh, what's this? Physical instrument. Okay. Did we ever do we ever solve this? An old monument. Oh, uh, we did. Yeah, they, they told us about how a bunch of communists fixed it up or something. We know about the pale, and she's the pale driver. No man, you caught me at an opportune moment. This awful weather keeps me awake. You can entertain me with your questions. Okay, this this will be the last thing of the on the checklist for this video. Uh, you know, just a small thing before we get into more big stuff. Uh, I think I know what's going on with you. And what is that? She sticks a filter a cigarette into a cigarette holder and reaches for a light. You're a pale driver. You transports goods through the pale. Great. He asked the Pines rep about the pale. And now he's talking to everyone about it. I talked to one person about it, kid. Come on. Fine, then. Just try not to black out again. And don't contemplate. We don't have time for that. It's death. But for the universe... Oh. We're contemplating the living shit out of this. I think I'm gonna put another... Hey, you say I level up. Oh, maybe maybe not. <laughs> I, I, we're still missing 10. We're still missing out a couple of points, sorry. Oh, I'm contemplating, Krim. I'm drawing existential conclusions from this. Exactly what I didn't want you to do. <sighs> Ma'am, my partner wanted to know if you work in pale transport. No offense. But your partner... She lights a cigarette, a white and silver cloud of smoke disappear into her mouth. <sighs> Seems like a bit of an idiot. She breathes out. The air tastes sweet. I blacked out from sheer heartbreak and lost all my memory of the world. Like Gabriel Buenguerro in Segureme Paraiso. You're the opposite of me, then. I remember everything. Even the things I never knew. Memories that are not yours. Things you never knew? The smell of liquor on Gabriel's lips after the shoot. In the motor park. The roses on the day of Franco Negro's coronation. On the grand stairs of Ryle. The smoke from the fouling piece when Dolores Day was shot. The look on her face like an orgasm. The wound in her chest. My hand in my father's hand. Except I never had a father. And I never shot her innocence of Dolores Day. I mean, you probably did have a father. Uh, over radiation? Heroic doses, Harifia. Heroic. Yeah, I don't think so. Isn't that dangerous? Thought insertion? Dithering? The Grad Catalan Magistral? It's more than dangerous. It's sad. But, at first I had to make a living. Now, when you've seen it all go away like that, rolling off like the sea, and then come back to this... She gestured at the square, the broken horse monument, the clanging of machines in the distance. What are we doing here? For thousands of years, Gabriel. 
It doesn't have to be like this. We can just give up. We can just become a vapor. Uh, we don't become vapor. Uh, what does it look like? The pale. Like looking into the ocean at night. In the dark. And? You cannot see it, but you know it's there. And it's big, bigger than anything. Bigger than all the other things combined. How, what does it feel like? Nothing. Until it starts. When you are deep enough. Then, for me, it's like autumn. Dark, gray and orange. The orange of street lights and the color of streets and the electric light. It smells like autumn too. It smells terrible. Nostalgia. Cooped up in the cabin, shaking. Terrible nostalgia. For yourself. For humans. It's too much to bear. She loves it. How do you pass through it? In the belly of an airship, behind the cell windows. So you don't look straight into it. It's not advised to look into it. Not in this lorry, then? No, the same one, a roller. They all are nowadays. Special wheels for connecting to the floor of the hole. She points to the machine, crumpled up like toys. One last thing, you say we can just become vapor? Yes. Ooh, level up. Okay, now we put that sweet, sweet endurance point there. No elaboration. I feel I already have some of what you have, in some ways. They say there's a point. One that I have not crossed. In the pale, super deep. If you stray too far, of course, on the U41A. Or in Lomonosov's land. Where every step you take is one step further from home. No matter the direction. It's a point you cannot come back from. Your mind becomes so radiant with the past, there is a flip. Instead of writing, it erases memory, nearing some kind of indescribable finale. Maybe you've been down the motorway south. Motherway south? She looks at her cigarette. It's almost out. She has swallowed it hungrily. Then at you, the mother motorway south. It's a story as lone horsemen tell. Lone horsemen, Carife, not pearl drivers. Way beyond the established pearl that's lit by radio frequencies, where it goes silent and dark, and the process begins, erasure, kilometer by kilometer, in any direction. The motorway south is a road you cannot come back from. In the center of this town, there's a ghostly motorway, she sang. It takes all the people where they want to stay. They say I've been away on a kind of holiday. She replies silently. What is at the end of the motorway south? No one knows what's at the end. I've only glimpsed the beginning. She takes a cigarette out of the cigarette holder and extinguishes it in it. But only glimpsed the beginning, so she's been there, kind of. I've only felt it in the distance, when I was a child. She a go child growing on the left. She goes silent, her eye closed and her hand shake. Hmm, ma'am? <sighs> Who's the young? A sigh escapes her lips, then silence, as she stares within herself. There is nothing more to do now. She's far away. She is receding in the clutches of some indescribable scattered emotion. The child, descending. You fried both your brains enough for today, detective. He inspect her, no response. Let's get some air. This one's far gone. He shakes his head silently. As he turned to leave. Well, we did get a thought. Motorway South. Temporary research bonus. Uh, minus one visual calculus. Bizarre, bizarre angles. At the edge of the map of the landmass, begin to disintegrate into pure trigonometry. The ocean smells, becoming a tangle of signs and cosines. Cines and cosines, I don't know how to pronounce that. The mountain range turned into a sharp angle, azimuth. It's green rain, shadows, dithers, like music turning in, into a waveform, and then vanishes. This is the end. I have uh, remember a textbook from your childhood, the porch collapsing on the edge of the isola. A transition from reality to pale, a single vector shooting out like a rocket, 
is the motorway south, splintering off the known pale. To where? Where does it go? Ooh, that sounds interesting. We might investigate that thought. We might thought think about that thought next time. Thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to give a like, comment, and subscribe. See each other in the next video. Bye-bye.